Good morning. I welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Bernard Toth. I'm a dental surgeon and I'm doing my daily practice in dental tourism in Budapest, Hungary. First of all, I want to thank Dio for this opportunity and I also want to thank these webinars, what they are organizing for us. Today, I want to talk about the sinus lift planning. What can wait for us in the HIMO cavity? Is it enough to make a panoramic X-ray? And will the X-ray able to give us all the information what we need? Or should we use other type of imaging uh, devices? In my presentation, I will show you X-rays, CBCT slices, and I also want to show some videos. These videos were recorded in human cadavers. Later, I will show how was it performed. I also want to make a statement that I am not sponsored by any company who produce X-rays or CTs. And the X-ray and the CBCT images were done by two machines from the same uh, manufacturer. Johann Wolfgang von Goethe said that one can recognize only what one already knows and understand. That means that a person search for something, what he knows, it will be over there. For that, I will return, for that motto, I will return at the end of my presentation. <clears throat> this person is uh, Mr. Konrad Röntgen. He invented the X-ray in uh, 1895, and in the early 20th century, the periapical X-rays were invented also. Uh, as you can see, a couple of old-fashioned periapical X-rays here. Around the 60s, the panoramic X-ray come. Of course, this is a very modern X-ray image, and in the beginning of the 21st century. Uh, the CBCT caves. This is a slice from a CBCT, and here we can see the coronal slice, the sagittal slice, and the horizontal slice, and of course the three-dimensional reconstruction. From a CBCT, we can make a panoramic live view, what we actually usually do. And of course, we can make a three-dimensional reconstruction <coughs> from it, which is very illustrative, as you can see. Obviously, the CBCT give a bigger load on our patients, but uh, nowadays we have these green light CBCTs, which makes only 19 to 40 microsieverts on one shoot. Compare to a chest CT, uh, which makes 7,000 microsieverts, it's quite a good number. And the illustration show <clears throat> an interesting detail here that the flight from New York to Los Angeles gives 80 microsieverts of load. So it's double than a CBCT. There are two definitions, the Alara and the Alada. Nowadays, we use the Alada, which means that we try to give as less load as it possible, but on the other hand, we need a good quality picture to make a proper diagnose. If we use a green light CBCT, then it is always highlighted, as you can see on the right, side, right upper side of the picture, that it is a low dose tomographic uh, scan. So, Let's talk about the sinus maxillaries. The hymo cavities positioned here and here in the inside of the maxilla. So now let's see a video walkthrough in the sinus. First we see the posterior recess, then we go on the lateral wall. There is a big nerve going all over there at the top, and we can see some blood vessels which are covered by only mucosa. Here is the blood nerve going all over. Oh, sorry, a nerve, I'm sorry. 
After that, we will go to the medial wall and we can see the communication which connects the nasal and the sinus area. This is another sinus. Here is the anterior recess as, and the mucoretentic cyst at the pointy end, the bottom. And we can also see a big septum over here. Yeah, and then we go to the medial wall where we can see a quite big ostium naturale. You can see my hand tool, which comes from the nasal area, moves this early for mucosa over there. Yeah. And this is the posterior recess. And the septum again. So this is how a healthy, nicely air-filled, not too extended, not too small sinuses look like. Sometimes we meet with this status when the sinuses are in a receded position and the processus alveolaris is very high, as you can see it, both sides, 16 to 80 millimeters, pretty high. And they are not just high, but also very thick as you can see in the coronal slice. Unfortunately, we more often meet with this picture when the processus alveolaris is totally resolved, both sides. We have quite big sinuses. Although the sinuses are quite healthy, but as you can see, the bone is paper thin. There can be issues in the hymocavities like when the sinuses are totally covered. As you can see, both of them are totally full. Or when the sinus basement is totally loaded with septums. I can count one, two, three, four, five septums here. The hymocavity has recesses. Let's check the right side. We have the anterior recess, we have the alveolar recess, we have the posterior recess, and we also have the recess zygomaticus and ethmoidalis. On this X-ray, the anterior recess is really extended. In a CBCT slice, it can look like a cyst, but it is just a part of the whole cavity. And on this slice, we can see that it is almost reaching the midline. We can have a really extended sinus even when we have all the teeth remained. This x-ray shows us that the recess alveolaris, which is here, can be extended between the molar roots, so that's how it forms the sinus interdentalis and interradicularis. Okay, so when I analyze a sinus, I always go through checklist. The first point is the dissymmetry. The panoramic X-ray won't give us a proper information about the dissymmetry. Even with the panoramic view of the CT, won't show us what we want to see here. Only the horizontal slice, I'm sorry, the horizontal slice showed that, that the left side sinus sits far behind. And on the 3D reconstruction, we can see the asymmetry too. So now we can position our sinuses uh, with, the, with these uh, slices. Another problem will come when we want to make a sinus slit in this left sinus, that we will see that the anterior recess is very narrow. And as we know, it is very challenging to work in this environment. Here is a video which shows how does it look like when we work in a narrow environment. We can see the lateral window. And as we can see the basement and the medial wall meets in a very small angulation. 
And in this situation, it is very challenging to elevate the membrane from the medial wall. This X-ray was used before, as you remember, this described a nice and healthy ideal sinus. But if we make a closer look, <clears throat> then the coronal slice will show us there is a big asymmetry between the two sinuses. The right side sinus <clears throat> has an indentation on the medial wall. Here, this indentation is quite smooth. But on this case, the indentation is much more pointy and narrow. So it can cause serious problems when it is necessary to elevate the membrane from the medial wall in such a case. The sinuses can be in a receded position, as we can see here on the left side. So the decimeter is quite obvious from the X-ray. The CT shows the same, and the sinus are almost totally missing, and we have more than 20 millimeter of bone, which is a which is a good thing if we want to put an implant in. In this case, the status is the same. The left side sinus is totally receded, and the protestus of our lives is quite enormous, really uh, high, really thick, as you can see. It's quite big. On this X-ray, we could not feel a big difference in size between the two sinuses. But the coronal here and the horizontal slices are very informative. As we can see, the right side sinus is just half as big as the left side. If we look at the three-dimensional reconstruction, it shows that the right side sinus also has a septum which makes it even harder to maintain the ventilation, so we can observe a thickened mucosa on the horizontal slice and actually all of the slices. This is not an X-ray what we want to see on a recall. Both sinuses are in a very receded position. Actually, they are almost missing. The processus alveolaris is totally destroyed by the inflammation. And on this picture, the sagittal slice uh, shows that the maxilla is totally in a reserved position and it sits more backward than the lower incisors. We have only uh, this very thin palate and the crista zygomatica alveolaris bone. Otherwise, the protestus alveolaris are totally destroyed. On the three-dimensional reconstruction, we can see a little indentation here, which shows a sign of a light, little sinus, and we can see the reserved maxilla position against the mandibula. Okay, I already mentioned that there is a communication between the nasal cavity and the sinus cavity. This slides show a nice, air-filled, good distributed, healthy sinus uh, area. The communication is under the medial turbinate, where it needs to be, both sides. Okay, where it needs to be. The, one of the issues can be the deviation, what is very well demonstrated here. The oswomer is heavily deviated, but uh, although the ventilation is still well maintained. On this uh, slice, the communication is closed. You can see it here. The ventilation on the left side sinus is not maintained anymore, so we can observe thickening of the mucosa here in the bottom of the sinus cavity. I want to show you some videos how these communication holes can look like. The first one, here we have 
two holes, one bigger and one smaller at the top. We have a direct view on the medial turbinate. Obviously, the ventilation is very good here, so we can see a nice, healthy mucosa around. And as you can see, I am moving the medial turbinate with my hand tool. And my hand tool. This communication is much smaller and surrounded by the saliform mucosa, which won't help to maintain uh, the ventilation. Here, the communication is even smaller. The surrounding mucosa is a bit inflammated. And the ostium could be quite good, but as you can see, it is closed by this early form mucosa. Okay. So in this case, we could not find any big differences between the two sinuses on the panoramic X-ray. But if we see, if but the CT will uh, immediately show that the right side sinus is totally covered. As you can see, the communication is closed. The mucosa on the, on the turbinates are very hypertrophic. Um, of course, uh, as you can see, the thickened mucosa uh, can be connected with the sinus lift and the bone augmentation, what was performed here. Again, on this panoramic X-ray, we cannot see any big difference between the two sides. But the CT shows that we were not right. The mucosa thickened on the right side up to the ostium naturale. And on the horizontal slice, we can see it's concentrically thickened. This video shows <clears throat> how does it look like when we have fluid in the hymal cavity. We will shake the head and then you can see the fluid is moving a bit. When the communication has some irregularities and it is not in an ordinary position, uh, then we can call it ostium in naturale. The panoramic X-ray won't give us a proper information from the ostiums. We need to check it with a CT scan. The coronal slide shows that the communication positions much, position much lower and the horizontal slice here shows that it opens to the anterior recess. But although the ventilation works good and that big thickened mucosa will be a really good ground for a sinus lift. On this X-ray, we can make a proper diagnosis. So let's check it with a scan. As we can see, on the right side, almost the whole medial wall is missing. And we have a huge communication between the nozzle and the sinus cavity. They are almost in one. This video shows how does it look like in a cadaver. We have a direct view on the media turbinate again. And almost all of the medial wall is just a big communication. And again, I'm moving the medial turbinate, but it is not that visible here. That's postoperative panoramic X-ray. That's a post mm, sorry. That's a post uh, operative panoramic X-ray. Uh, but it is really hard to tell what kind of surgery was done here from the X-ray. The CT shows a typical status after a loop cardio surgery on the right side. Meanwhile, this procedure, the surgeon make a window both on the medial and the lateral wall, as we can see it here. And they clear out what they want to clear out. Uh, and because this is an after healing CT, we can see that the soft tissue 
is uh, pulking in the sinus. As we know, the loop cardio surgery is a kind of drastic surgery, and we know that too that after this surgery we will have a functional loss mucosa, and it won't be ciliated anymore. So nowadays, if the problem can be solved with a fresh surgery, then it is a more preferable choice. The communication can be closed from the nasal area, like in this case. We can see a concavulosa here, what is a cyst in the turbinate, and it is closing the ostium. That's why the mucosa is thickened in the left side sinus. The next topic is the blood vessels. The hymocavity gets its blood supply from the arteria maxillaris. The third platoon of the arteria maxillaris is around the tuber maxillae. There will be a branch, what we call arteria alveolaris superior posterior, and that will give the blood supply for the, the, for the hymen or cavity. There will be another branch, which we call arteria infraorbitalis. It goes in the top here. And this will give two other branches, the <coughs> arteria dentalis superior medi and anterior. On this x-ray, these are not visible, but I will show them. After it goes forward, and it will meet with three other branches <clears throat> at the corner of the upper tura piriformis. You can see it here. These are the arteria sphenopalatina, the arteria nasopalatina, and the arteria palatina descendants. We can see the anastomosis here. These will be the blood vessels, what we can see on our slices. The blood vessels can run in the bone or they can be covered only by mucosa. If we make a panoramic view from our CBCT image and we play a bit with the thickening of the slices, then we can have a good chance that we will discover the branches. As we can see it here and on the right side, also. And of course, we can follow them where they are running in the latter bony wall on these sagittal uh, pictures. The three dimensional reconstruction show us a big, nice branch here, which must be the arteria infraorbitalis. Here is a little video what show us a nerve and the blood vessel going on the lateral wall. And uh, as we can see, the blood vessel is only covered by mucosa. If we have a very well with uh, sinus maxillaris, then we have a good chance to discover many branches on a panoramic history, like here. i show you the branches. Here, here, here. And what is going on in the whole way? But if we make a panoramic view from our CT CT scan, CB CT scan, then we have a much better view, and we can see the branches much better. It is quite rare that we can find four branches running in the lateral wall. We can count one, two, three, four. This anatomic situation must be discovered, otherwise our visibility mean by the sinus lift will be really reduced. So again, a nice, very well, very well wind, veined uh, sinuses. Uh, the branches are here, here. Uh, with a one millimeter slice, the branches are barely visible. The anastomosis can be visible here. But if we make a five millimeter slice, we have a much better view and we can discover the branches here, here, and we can feel that, that there will be an anastomosis there. 
If we change the angulation and go back to one millimeter slice, it gets clearly visible here and the branch over there on the left side. And you can see the branch here and here. And uh, as before, the branches can be followed in the lateral uh, bony wall. This is an interesting video which shows how the blood rush out from the blood vessels when we elevate the membrane with a water lift and the Schneiderian membrane gets white. Actually, it is not just a water lift, it is a dual technique when we use a water and then a balloon to elevate the membrane in an internal sinus lift procedure. Okay. Another topic what we should check when we analyze the sinus are the under root septums. As you can see, this sinus basement is laced with a couple of septums. <coughs> On the, but on the panoramic X-ray, we won't be able to see how high these septums exactly and what are their direction. And of course, we don't know are they connected or not. To get these informations, we need to check the sagittal slice, which shows they are quite big, quite high, much higher than we expected on the X-ray. And the horizontal slice show us the direction and uh, as we can see, the right side sinus, uh, in the right side sinus, there is a one, two orofacial position, one mesiodistal position septums, and here they are connected together. On the first septum case, we can count one, two, three septums, one on the right side, two on the left side. But on the molar area, there can be more. So let's make a closer look. The horizontal slice show us that we were right with the counting, but as you can see, the left side molar region septums are connected. So if we make a virtual endoscopy, this really complicated surface will wait for us, as you can see it here. It will be really challenging to elevate the membrane in such a hard environment. We also can see the imprinting of the first uh, molar roots, as you can see it here and here. This video shows that, that sometimes there is no mean to plan any kind of sinus lift procedures because the basement is full with septums. In this septum case, we can count uh, two septums uh, on the right side and one, of the one on the left side here. And as we can see here, one of them is Y-shaped. We definitely need to examine it with a CT scan. The horizontal slides show that there is no septum on the left side so I'm failed. And the right side, <clears throat> a mesiodistal and the orovestibular position septums are here and here. Mesiodistal and orovestibular position. And they are connected. The virtual endoscopy show it again. That's kind of a sculpture of septums. And it is just waiting for us to elevate the membrane from them. But to elevate the membrane from them is quite impossible. The panoramic X-ray <coughs> show us one big septum here and a big dome-shaped shadow. And of course there is another dome-shaped shadow on the left side here. We can expect that this septum will go through the basement of the sinus and supports this mucoretentic cyst over there, that we cannot be sure, so let's check it. The panoramic view showed that it is enough high to support it, and the horizontal slice showed that we were right, and it is goes 
all, all, all along the sinus basement, as you can see it here. And as we see, the left side sinus is uh, covered, and there was this dome-shaped shadow. So in this case, the panoramic X-ray gave us all the information what we needed. Pretty rare, actually. So know <clears throat> that we are a bit confused that we can see that we can check this X-ray. As we see, we can see a kind of high septum at the bottom of the sinus. We can easily think that it can cause us serious problems. But the horizontal slide shows us that this septum is only on the medial wall. And the three-dimensional reconstruction shows that, that we will be able to work without any big difficulty on the lateral bony wall. Another septum case where we count uh, one, two septums, one in the right, one in the left side. The right side uh, is quite flat, look harmless. On the left side, we can see two little spikes. Find out, is there anything? The horizontal slice shows the position, which is or vestibular both sides, that's good. The sagittal slides show that the, that the left side septum is not too high, and there is no spikes at the pointy end. And this is how it looks like in a three-dimensional reconstruction. I'm talking about this. And the virtual endoscopy shows that it is quite a solvable uh, situation. In a case like this, even with an internal approach, the membrane can be elevated. And I want to show how does it look like from the inside. We made many procedures in cadavers. We recorded the sinus cavity with an endoscope. Meanwhile, we did the surgery from the outside. That was the endoscope with an angulated head, what we used. For this approach, we used the sinus master kit, Cresta part. The sinus tea kit contains only the Cresta part. Here is the Trifine dealer with the stopper, and uh, uh, this is the round reel uh, with the stopper again. We elevated the membrane with water first. And then we use the balloon to elevate the membrane more and to keep the elevation concentric. Here is a video from the procedure. We are working here at the feet of the septum. After drilling, the water elevated the membrane, as you will see. But it elevated till the tightness reached a limit. After that limit, the water perforated the membrane. As you can see, the water is flowing away. So we needed something that will elevate the membrane more. As you can see, the balloon comes and elevates the membrane nicely from the septum. And we get a quite good result. I have some remarks with the water leaf, so please let me tell you. So, first, as you saw it before, the water lift has a limit how much it can elevate the membrane. After it reaches a point in the tension, uh, then the water will find a weak spot where it will perforate, it, perforate the membrane and flow away. Although here the elevation remained Nicely, constant, uh, nicely concentric here. Second remark, when we drill close to a nerve, a bigger nerve or a blood vessel, like here, the water will find the easiest way where it can rush away, so it won't stay circulated. like this, the water right away. So, if we elevate the membrane with water first, because the water elevates the membrane very softly, then we use a balloon, what is more solid, and it helps to keep the elevation concentric, 
And of course, it gives us the strength to overstep this tightness. Then we can have this nice result, what you can see in this video. So water first and then balloon. Here we go. Nice result. Okay. Uh, this video was an accident actually. After short use of the balloon, it perforated. But it shows well that it is enough to use the balloon to overstep the critical tightness and keep the elevation concentric. After that, as you can see, the water is able to elevate the membrane that much. And we, have, we can have this pretty nice elevation. Okay, so let's get go to another septum case. Here we can count, count two little spikes here on the right side and a pretty high on the left side. But both of them are mysterious, so we definitely need to have a closer look. Okay, on the panoramic view, the left side septum, as you can see the basement is here, goes really high. And of course, we can see the two spikes on the right side. The three-dimensional scan will provide us the most informative picture. On the right side, the smaller septums, on the x-ray they are smaller uh, spikes, goes all over the sinus basement and they are really close to each other and they are really close to the sinus interradicularis which makes a really complicated surface. What is the sinus interradicularis? I already mentioned. When the recess basalis, which is a part of the recess alveolaris, extend deeply between the roots and the teeth, it can form the sinus interradicularis and between the teeth uh, interdentalis. And we can see it here. On the left side, we can see a septum, uh, which is really high and steep. And we are also able to discover <coughs> an imprinting of a blood vessel, which runs on the lateral bony wall. This video shows how does it look like when the premolars and the molars are hanging in the sinus and they are covered only by mucosa. We, uh, we saw a case before when we had a high septum in the middle like this. On that case the septum was on the medial wall. Here the situation will be totally different. We can count uh, one two septums on the x-ray. The horizontal slice showed the position is something between mesiodistal and orofacial. So it's like an angulation. Okay. And this is how the septum uh, goes through the basement. As you can hear. So they are quite high. And as we can see, they are totally closing the anterior recess. <clears throat> we already talked about how hard it is to work in such a narrow places like this. So that will cause us serious problems. There will be two more septum cases. I will concentrate only the tricky part on this x-ray. Right side looks like a rosette. And the last septum here is barely visible. The panoramic view show all the septums for us, one, two, three, four on the right side. And the sagittal slides show that the last septum here is pretty high. And if we make a closer look, and we make a, we concentrate on this area, and we make a virtual endoscopy, then we will see that there is a curl at the feet of the septum 
and the septum is pretty high and steep. And we can also discover these pools over there. So, so it is not impossible, but uh, really challenging to elevate the membrane here, especially when we want to elevate both sides of this last septum. The last septum case. Again, the left side septum is in the middle. Uh, till now, we are really suspicious about them, so let's find out how they look like. Actually, we like what we find here. The mesial septum is not bad positioned, so it's quite all right. We have good distances around it. But uh, and and in the septums in uh, the septums in the back are mostly on the medial wall. This virtual endoscopy, what we can see here, uh, showing us that they are catching on each other. Although it is not an easy case, but the sinus lift uh, can be performed. Okay, so we can find inflammatory conditions in the sinus maxillaries, like the acute sinusitis. The acute sinusitis doesn't have a typical radiological sign on the panoramic X-ray. We can see that the sinuses are covered, but uh, nothing else. On the CBCT, we will find these bubbles here, here, and here. After we saw the bubbles, it will be quite obvious that it is an acute sinusitis. The bubbles are the sign of an acute process. Here, the left side sinus is covered, and we can see the bubbles again. This is how an acute sinusitis looks like from the inside. And we can discover the bubbles here also. And we see pus in the hymo cavity. Okay. If we have acute, then we have chronic inflammation too. As we can see on the x ray, the left side sinus is shrinked. On the horizontal slice, we can see an additional bone mass inside the left side sinus cavity, circularly. This is a typical sign of a long-lasting chronic inflammation. And the three-dimensional reconstruction show us how thick the walls are. That case will be really similar to what we see before. We can see the inside wall is circularly thickened here. This additional bone contains sac bone sequester, inflammated mucosa, and newly formed bone. This video shows how does it look like from the inside. This is a typical picture of sinusitis maxillaris chronica caseosa. Caseosa because it is melting like cheese. And as you can see, it's really inflammated. Okay, if we have that many incomplete root canal treatments, then we always need to be suspicious. As you can see, the sinuses <coughs> are covered, and there is a high chance that the chronic inflammation on the right side and both on the left side are dental related. On this next x ray, the source of the problem is pretty obvious the right upper side, second molar. As we can see, the right side sinus is totally covered. The endoparodontal lesion causing, causing this uh, chronic inflammation. When this inflammation not treated properly, they, they can grow that big, like this cyst on this X-ray. Yeah. But to know the exact size, we have to make a CBCT. 
As ad and as we see, it is totally destroyed the medial wall and some of the lateral wall. We can see it on the three dimensional reconstruction. Yeah. Actually, the hymocavity and the right side nasal cavity, the, the, the right side of the nasal cavity is in one. And if it's not get, uh, it won't be treated uh, properly, then it will get even bigger. The next topic is the dome-shaped shadows. There is a dome-shaped shadow in the right side of the sinus. As we can see, it is fulfilling the cavity totally, but it is not destroying the environment. Here is another one, which is sitting at the pointy end of the septum. It is quite in an unexpected position. And this is how they look like from the inside. This is kind of a solid one. Good. And I will show you a pendulotic form. Okay, the head is uh, back there. That's why it is hanging. And if we, we will shake a bit the head and then we'll be visible that it is moving on this pendulotic form, on this pendulum. Good. One more thing. You remember, I said, Goethe said, we will discover what we already know. In a study, uh, researchers show more than 200 lung slices to 24 radiologic specialists. The task was to find the cancer cells in the lung. There was five slices which contained this little gorilla at the right upper side of the picture. The gorilla is 48 times bigger than the cancer cells. All of the specialists diagnosed the cancer cells. But 20 from the 24 specialists did not mention this gorilla. So only four saw the gorilla. And it is, it is also proven that almost everybody looked on this gorilla. This is called inattentional blindness. So it, what I want to say with this, if we don't know what we need to be finded, then we have a very great chance, then we will miss it. And I want to thank uh, your attention, and I wish a very nice summer for everyone. Thank you.